Hi guys, it's Sandy and I have a slightly different video for you today. Instead of a tutorial, I'm showing you 37 Christmas cards. I've been going a little bonkers lately trying to get a start on my Christmas cards. I send out 200 or so and I pour myself into all of them so I need to get started early and thus I have. And what I decided to do this year, in addition to creating two brand new holiday classes, that you'll see at the end of this selection of cards is to go through all the existing holiday classes that I have and make new samples to put in the classrooms. And with each one, I'm trying to tweak the technique a little, show you a different layout of it, different color combinations, that kind of thing, and putting a few notes in there about what I did so that you can learn how to take the lessons you're learning and adapt them and do other things with them. So I'm gonna put the name of the class above it so you know which class you're looking at and talk a little bit about what kind of things you learn in it. Okay, let's get started. The first class I wanted to show you is watercolor and this one is different than the others. The rest of the classes are all Copic marker and this watercolor class, I looked for how to teach very simple images. So snowman, I've taught how to do a, a single snowman but here in the sample cards, I'm doing snowmen that are kind of talking to each other and having two of them in a picture. The ornaments in the class are traditional colors, so I tried one with non-traditional and I tried them also in a different shape. Then there's one with how to paint a tree and I've also done one with three trees in it. So just trying to give you more ideas for how to use the same techniques. So there's a wreath and then if you mess up a wreath, just put a ribbon on it and no one will know that you messed up that part of it. The candle is just a single candle in the lesson, and I've done one with four candles, which gave me the idea to do an advent wreath, which I thought was kind of cool too. So next, let's get to some of the Copic classes, and some of these are a little older classes, so lots of you have taken them before, but this first one is called City Sidewalks. And it's got images from small towns as well as big cities. And in one of the lessons, you'll learn how to make just some buildings in the background, random shapes, and then add awnings and lights and things. And I've added a little fox from Lawn Fawn on a Vespa from Ellen Hudson, just to add some stamps to these on the card samples. This one has a bridge. You can do them in the kinds of grays and browns in the class or this rainbow collection of colors I've used. And in the class, you learn how to make a city in the background. This one, I decided to make uh, a tree scene in the back since it's got a bear. And the bear, we don't want him in the city. We want the bear to stay out in the woods. Then we've got a raccoon. It's a little raccoon from Lawn Fawn. He's the only stamp in the rest of this. In the class, you learn how to draw the little park bench at an angle. But here I show how you can just do it with really simple straight shapes. You don't have to do the perspective and still come up with a really beautiful card. This one is a picture of a an overall, like an overview on a hillside looking over a small town, little penguin from MFT. And he's just walking along, having some fun in the snow. This one, I think I've seen used by more students in postings on Instagram, etc. with having this road in the middle of a city where we talk about perspective a little bit. So you get the lanterns looking like they're going off into the distance, etc., and really fun image for holiday cards. The next one is much more outdoorsy. So we've got the city types of scenes and the town types of scenes with buildings and structures. And then we focus on just doing winter wonderland. And in that class, we just do trees and mountains and that kind of stuff. So this one has really soft trees in the background. One of the fastest backgrounds you can do. Just this hint at the fact that there's trees there really works beautifully. The technique is really nice and there's a more complicated one than that in the class. This one has soft trees in the background and then a really nice little path for the penguin to walk along. Both of these are MFT images by the way from last year because I haven't got a whole lot of new stamps yet for 2020. And this one is Ellen Hudson's little squatch little guy and I flipped the cabin left to right in this one just so if you need to move the cabin to the other side because of whatever stamp you're using you can see what the structure of that cabin would look like and it teaches how to make the mountains in the background and the trees 
and I've added a mailbox because he's got mail and he's excited. Next up is a giant moon with some trees in front of it. And this one, I believe, is a picket fence image. I stamped it last year and I just had it in my stash. So I decided to color it with this. I've given him shading in the center of him because he's being backlit and there's just a little light creeping around the edges of his body, that sort of thing. And uh, he's feeling very merry. A lot of these sentiments, by the way, are in Ellen Hudson's stamp set um, with this really fun font. This one also, I believe, is Picket Fence. And the trees are just a diff different arrangement than what you'll get in the class to kind of do a birch forest with these really light trees in them. Really fun class. Great classic types of winter backgrounds in each one of those. So next up is the interiors class. And these are just things that are inside as opposed to focusing on outside. One of them is a wreath. And here I added a little squatch to it. And <laughs> I drew my own ladder. You can draw just a little H down there if you want to make something like that using the wreath. And then I kind of squished it so his head looks like he's pushing it upward. But the wreath is the portion taught in the class. Then there's a window. And it's a window with snow that's caught on each of the, the window panes. The lighting is coming from the other side. So I used a brand new image from MFT with this little girl. I turned it around. She's looking at you, but I turned her so she's looking the opposite direction by coloring all of her hair in really dark and making her have a really dark sweater with polka dots on it so I could hide the fact that there's lines in there. There's a fireplace and it's a, a brick surround in the fireplace in class that you'll learn. But I decided to just make big old rainbow rocks. I thought that would be kind of fun for a fireplace surround. And my little dinosaur was so festive that I gave him lights all the way around the edges of his fireplace because he's a happy little dinosaur from Ellen Hudson. And then this one is from an old stamp set from MFT. I've, I love this dog, and I had to adjust the ears so that they look like my Vienna's ears. This is her and her siblings I'm picturing in my mind. And you'll learn in the class how to make the pillows and the blanket and all of the quilting and everything on it. So if you have stamps that just have a head peeking out, you can use that kind of thing. And I've added shading across it so that it looks like there's an open door with casting a little ray of light into the, the bedroom so you can peek in at the kiddos. And the last one in this one is a Christmas tree. The Main lesson is a triangle-shaped Christmas tree all decorated up. And I decided to scale it up because I had this image. I believe this is from Penny Black, I think. And I had to make the tree bigger. So there's that. Now on to the new classes. This Starlight Star Bright class is, I was focusing on things that you could use with nativities. But you can use these backgrounds for other things too. And in each one of these lessons, I do a bigger piece of paper and then I show you just a sample card. I don't show you how to make the card, but you can see that I've taken the background and translated it into being on a card itself. So there's just different kinds of skies and different ways to apply the color. This one is kind of Aurora Borealis-ish, but not completely, but it's much easier than you might think to create something like that. This one was an accidental technique, learning how to make these god rays on something. It just kind of happened when I was messing up with something. I thought, you know, that looks really cool and figured out how to replicate it. So there you go. I also teach how to make a cave because some people think that Jesus was born in a cave rather than an inn because he was kind of outside the inn. It might have been a cave. And so I show you how to make a cave if you're interested in doing that. And then we have a cloud bank. And I was picturing light coming up from the earth and shining on the clouds like it does sometimes. And I've created a card sample for it with baby Jesus. Don't worry, he's got some sort of roof over him. I'm sure he's not just out there open to the elements. But I do talk about how to make the hay and make sort of a divot for the manger to set into and that sort of thing. So just a little bonus addition to that particular lesson. And then we have a desert because everybody's going to have to have a, an image for the three wise men, right? And the camels. So you can use the bottom portion of it and use the sand for that. Or you can put something else in there if you need to and use this background for some other type of card. But the whole idea of the, the dusk, that 
deep setting sun in that really bright color with the beautiful starry big sky behind it. I thought it was going to be really nice for all those images that we get this year that are going to be coming out. We're going to be getting lots of nativity scenes, I'm sure. The next new class is the winter storybook scenes. And this one is really fun as well. Got some images that are really fairly easy to create. They're not as hard as you might think. This one is a sample card for these trees. And I also will show you how to make a little bit of a, an icy lake down below. So you'll be able to see that one. I've got some fun mountains that just make me think they're frosted with, with icing or something. And I love icing, so I'm particularly happy with that. And I grabbed a lawn fawn bear and a little tree to put in front of my scene. We'll do a little bit of negative coloring because negative coloring is always fun. And I used Ellen Hudson's little dachshund that came out this year. So he's out there in his sweater, all warm and toasty with a purple sky. So you can use all kinds of colors in this class. You're not tied to the colors I use at all. And here I decided to make some really graphic mountains that would be really craggy. And for the sample card, I used a donkey from MFT. Lots of MFT in my collection of late. <laughs> and then this one I think is going to be everybody's favorite, this rainbow forest, which is really beautiful. And on the card sample, I flipped left to right, which, which hillside was in front and which one's behind, but used a little image from reverse confetti for this particular card. So that is the new classes. I hope that was helpful for you in figuring out which the heck one of these classes might best suit the types of cards that you want to make this year and what suits the images that you get this year because what stamps you buy is going to dictate the kinds of scenes you're going to probably be using but also be thinking about using some of your non-holiday images for your holiday cards because when you put them in a holiday scene any animal any little person anything can be on a Christmas card. All right, that's it for me. I will see you guys later. Links to everything are in the doobly-doo down below, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.